Welcome back guys. So today we are going to talk about Azure AD SSO. So this is going to be a bit more technical than usual. I'm going to try and be a bit more technical than usual without sort of getting too into depth into the, you know, the working of Azure AD SSO, but I'm going to try and explain to you what it is in a, in a bit more of a technical way. So if you do enjoy the technical side of things, then smash the like button, smash the subscribe button. If you don't, I have do have a few other videos that you guys might be interested in. So please have a look at my channel and see if you're interested in anything. And if you are, again, like the video, smash the subscribe button. Okay, so what is Azure AD SSO? Firstly, what is Azure AD? So just a very quick brief overview of that. Azure AD is the equivalent of Active Directory inside Microsoft Azure. Sounds simple enough and pretty much is. So essentially that's what it is. It is a directory of users and groups and computers and other sort of objects. It is no different to your on-prem world other than the fact that it is a bit more flat. So there's less sort of configuration, there's less sort of things that you have to manage as an administrator. Let's not get too into that. If you do want to hear more about Azure AD, let me know in the comment section below. I'll make a video about that too. I feel like there's a lot out there, so it's probably not much use. Okay, so then what is SSO? SSO is single sign-on. You might have heard the term a lot in the past, I don't know, five, 10 years or whatever, but Azure AD SSO is basically the ability to do single sign-on using Azure AD. So allowing your users to use Azure AD as the single sign-on method for many different types of applications. Previously, you might have used something like Microsoft's ADFS to do the same sort of thing. So ADFS was a federation platform that would allow organizations to use the Active Directory on-premises directory as the authentication platform for third parties or trusted parties. So basically you'd be able to log onto things like payroll using ADFS. That would mean that the customer or the user or the employee would only have to remember that one username and password that they have for their computer and that also let them into multiple applications because you have that ADFS trust or the ADFS federated service that is allowing you to actually do that. So basically with single sign-on, what you're doing is you're allowing your application to trust the authentication source, which will either be ADFS or Azure AD, and you're allowing it to trust the authentication from this authentication provider and allow the users to log in using this authentication method. So let's break down someone logging in. So someone logging into an application such as payroll, for example. So let's say that payroll is using Azure AD SSO or basically any sort of federation service, but let's use Azure AD as the example. So any sort of login is a two part process. So you have your authentication piece. Authentication is when the user comes in and they go to payroll and payroll goes, you have to log in, sends them to Azure AD and they actually log in using their Microsoft 365 or Azure AD credentials. At that point, they put their username and their password and they might get a multi-factor authentication prompt. They are proving that they are who they say they are. So I say that I am Elias Atti, I need to prove it using my password and using my multi-factor authentication token that I am going to receive. That is the authentication piece. That is the piece that I use to say this is who I am. So this is now my token. I am Elias Atti. It's a signed token trusted by the Azure AD platform and you trust this platform. And I'm presenting it to the payroll application. Now the payroll application has to do the second part of the process, which is authorization. Authorization is when the application goes, okay, yep, you are who you say you are. I trust that token. I believe you are Elias Atti. Now, what do you actually have access to? Okay, you have access to see everyone's pay and you have access to update people's pay. Whereas if I was someone else, it would go, okay, you only have access to view your own pay certificates. So that is the authorization piece. So keep that in mind. Whenever you're talking about logging into something, it's always a two part process. So now that we have handed over all the authentication piece to something like Azure AD, then we need to be able to make sure that Azure AD is secure and it can be easily managed. And that is the awesome part about SSO. Because if you have a hundred different applications in your organization and you're using Azure AD as the primary source of authentication for all of those applications, then that means that you have one single platform that you need to update, that you need to manage, that you need to control security for, that you can use to view all of those applications and the sign-ins and the risky sign-ins. All of the above can be done from Azure AD. So basically Azure AD SSO allows us to have all those applications using the same platform 
for authentication purposes. Now, the reason that administrators and organizations like this so much is because it provides awesome things like multi-factor authentication, it allows you to control security, it allows you to view risky sign-ins, it allows you to view someone's sign-in behavior and look for different types of patterns that might look like an, an attacker or look like brute force attacks or something like that. And it also means that we have less systems to maintain. We have less username and password databases to maintain, which means that there's a smaller attack vector. And it also means and I know that all my service desk people are gonna love this one. It also means a lot less calls to service desk asking for password resets because in Azure AD we have things like self-service password reset portal and just in general, if the user has to keep only one password in their memory, then they're more likely to remember that password. So I hear you all screaming down your computer now saying, yeah, but if we put all our username and passwords in one single database, then that means we only need a breach on one system and that allows access into all systems. That is true but you have to think about it more holistically. So when you have everything in one platform, that means you have more eyes on that one platform. Now, when you have all things in multiple platforms, generally in IT, I see all the time, when you have too many things to manage, then those there's only some that actually get managed properly and lots of others that do not. So to keep all of our eggs in one basket is a bit of a catch-22. We get all the sort of awesome security that Azure AD has, and we get all of the great features as long as you know what you're doing. But yes, we are putting it all in one platform. There is pros and there is cons to that. And I think personally, I always suggest that everyone goes to Azure AD because you have Microsoft's backing for security. You have lots of different types of features that allow that type of backing. And you also have only one place to manage everything from. And I think that that is actually one of the main reasons that I would move all application authentication to Azure AD because just for general management, it is a lot better. So another example is that generally application developers and your application teams will be the ones that are managing username and database passwords that are solely for that application. Now, when you actually move to Azure AD, you move the ownership of that system to your IT administrators, people that have been dealing with username and passwords forever in a day and those people have lots of experience in you know making sure that things are secure and we are actually a lot more in control of those systems than when the application developers have those or when the application teams have those systems in their control the application guys have a lot of things to do and i think it's just one less thing for them to worry about when we move the authentication piece into a centralized system when we give that support to the IT admin. So to sum it up, from a business perspective, you get much better control, you get much more oversight of, of what's going on in your authentication platform. You get to enforce your own security and make sure that the security standards are the same across all your applications. From a user's perspective, you have less passwords to manage, you have a much better experience because you only have to sign on to things once and you also only have one username and password to remember and you get less calls to service desk. Can't get better than that. So I hope that helps. I hope that breaks it down a bit. I understand that Azure AD and especially Azure AD SSO can be a bit confusing sometimes. So if you have any questions, drop them in the comment section below and I will try and get to them as soon as I can. And if you do have short form questions, you want me to just quickly bang out some answers for them, then add me on TikTok. I am trying to establish that a bit. So add me on TikTok. My name is all kit, no clue, same as here. Let me know if you have any questions there as well. I'm happy to reply to them with a video reply or something like that. If you did enjoy the video, if you did get some value out of it and smash the like button, smash the subscribe button. We'll see you next time.